Hi guys, welcome to another screencast for uh, A2PE Exercise Physiology. Uh, today we're looking at the factors affecting the energy systems used. As always, take extensive notes and bring those notes to you uh, to your next lesson. Okay, so the first factor that affects the energy systems used is intensity and duration of exercise. And as you've been finding out in lessons, uh, that it is a combination of exercise intensity and duration that determines the predominant energy systems that is used. You've also been finding out that if the exercise is of high intensity and short duration, either 100 meters sprint or 400 meters sprints, we predominantly use the ATP, PC and lactic acid system because it's a predominant anaerobic activity. If your uh, exercise is of medium to low intensity and long duration, predominantly we are using the aerobic energy system, such as the triathlon or a marathon. Now, two major factors affect which energy system is used, and these are your lactic acid threshold and your OBLA, your onset of blood lactate accumulation. Now we'll learn more about that in lessons. Okay. The next one we'll look at is your energy systems threshold. Now you've been learning what the threshold actually means and basically it's the point at which one energy system is taken over by another as becoming the predominant energy system to resynthesize ATP. And that is in response to the intensity and duration of what exercise you're actually doing. However, it will not always follow a natural path, i.e. ATPPC, a lactic acid system, and your aerobic energy system. And these are the reasons why. Here we have uh, Peter Odomingi, star striker for the baggies. He will not always be sprinting. He will be sprinting at some, at some point. He'll be jogging. He'll be walking as well. So at various points within the game, he will be using different energy systems at different parts. It might not always be ATP, PC, then lactic acid, then aerobic system. Here we have Bradley Wiggins, or Wigo, to his mates. Now Wigo, when he's doing the Tour de France that he won so well in the summer, he does a lot of hill climbs. During those hill climbs, his intensity would rapidly increase. So he'll be using his lactic acid system predominantly to provide the energy for that hill climb. But when he drops back down on a downhill run or a flat ride, he'll be working aerobically. So his energy systems have responded to the intensity and duration of, of his race. The next one we'll look at is your oxygen availability. Basically, we know that our body needs a sufficient supply of oxygen to resynthesize ATP. And we also know as well, if our oxygen levels fall below the demand of exercise, and that's a massive problem, and therefore we use our lactic acid system to break down glucose uh, anaerobically, and that produces lactic acid. Now we need efficient respiratory and cardiovascular system to provide this oxygen availability. And as we've been learning in lessons, oxygen supply affects which food fuels can be broken down to resynthesize ATP. Now we've been learning that to break down fats you require about 15% more oxygen to break down the fats into free fatty acids. So oxygen supply plays a major part in which fuels you actually uh, can use. The next one we'll look at is fuel availability. Now if we exercise too intense at, uh, in, such, in too short a uh, space of time, we deplete our PC stores. That, that's what happens during our ATP PC system. However, our PC stores can be resynthesized during recovery. Now, glycogen is the main fuel for the first 20 minutes of, of exercise. And after approximately 20 to 45 minutes, 
Uh, free fatty acids, FFAs, are used alongside glycogen to help us resynthesize ATP. After approximately two hours, free fatty acids are used for our aerobic energy production. So someone like Paula Radcliffe, who uh, runs the marathons, she will use predominantly glycogen and free fatty acids to help fuel her system. That's why it's important to have a good balanced diet if you're an athlete to make sure you're eating the right nutrients in order to give you the energy that you need to run whichever distance you want you want to run. However, if there is insufficient oxygen, then you of course have to break down glucose anaerobically, and that's a massive problem. And that's where you get your lactate threshold and you hit your obla, or you hit the wall, as athletes have tended to say. There's just no energy, there's nothing there. So, if your exercise is high intensity, short duration, you use PC and glycogen as fuel. If your exercise is of low intensity for long duration, you use free fatty acids and glycogen as fuel. <clears throat> okay, the next one we're going to look at is enzyme activation levels. Now, enzymes are like little Pac-Men. Uh, they break down the uh, fuels so you can uh, use them for ATP resynthesis. Now, if these enzymes don't work properly or they're inhibited, they can't break down the fuels as efficiently as they need to. So basically no enzymes, <coughs> excuse me, no breakdown of fuels, no ATP resynthesis. And the final one we're going to look at today is your fitness levels aerobically and anaerobically. So here's Mo Farah, very fit young man, double Olympic gold medal winning uh, athlete at the uh, London 2012 Games. Now Mo will have a greater efficiency of his cardiovascular and respiratory systems which allows him to take in, transport and use oxygen to break down glycogen and free fatty acids more efficiently. So if Mo and myself was running, I'm not fit at all. So Mo would have a greater ability to break down all the fuels and use his oxygen to give him ATP. <coughs> Mo would always use his free fatty acids earlier during submaximal exercise. Now this will enable Mo to conserve his glycogen stores and also delay his obla and lactate threshold which allows him to exercise at a higher intensity for a longer period of time. Another thing as well, your fitness levels. If I, being an untrained athlete, I'm able to exercise at 50 to 56% 50, of my VO2 max before I hit Obla. However, Mo, being a trained athlete that he is, is able to exercise at 85 to 90% of his VO2 max before he hits Obla. So basically, that's just showing how Mo can exercise at a higher intensity as opposed to me before he hits the point where he hits the wall and lactic acid production exceeds the speed of removal. And the final one is fitness levels anaerobic. And there we have Shelley Ann Fraser Price, the 100 metre uh, gold medal winning uh, woman in the London 2012 Games. So in her types of fitness levels, she's going to have an increase of ATP and PC. She's also going to have an increase of her glycogen stores and also an increased efficiency of her anaerobic enzymes. She's going to be able to tolerate lactic acid a lot better than someone who's not trained anaerobically. And in doing all this, she will be able to delay her threshold of the ATP, PC and lactic acid systems, which will enable her to exercise at a higher intensity for a longer period of time. Okay guys, that's it. Please bring your notes to your lessons. Uh, please go over the screencast again and we'll see you in lessons. Okay.